Our test speaker is Tim Tickison, who will give us a speech on home economics. Tim Tickison. Do you ever say to yourself, kids today don't know anything? If there's not an app for it, they're not going to know how to do it. There's an answer to that. There's a solution. The solution is home economics. Remember back in junior high, you took a home economics class, you probably made a little pillow look like a three-legged like octopus or a strange kitty cat. That was the key to you becoming the good people that you are now. And it's home economics because home is the center of our lives. We live at home, home sweet home, the comforts of home. You lay your head at home, you go to bed at night. That is where you feel comfortable. That's where you want to be at the end of the day. It's home. And the economics part doesn't really play in so much financially, but it does kind of weave a thread through this whole solution that I have for you today. In fact, the weaving is important because you made that pillow in junior high. I'm sorry, middle school, they call it now. But a lot of people today, a lot of young people, millennials, don't know how to sew on a button. Do you believe that? They can't sew on a button. If I lost this button on my jeans, I'd be getting divorced. I don't know how to do it, but I do know how to do it because it's a skill that I learned when I was just, well, not this tall. This tall, but I don't know, I was tall. <laughs> but it's a skill that I learned back in middle school. It's a good skill to have. And also, it wasn't necessarily a home economics, a portion of home economics, but there's another class altogether, shop. And who here took shop class? Not any of us. What did you learn how to do in shop? You learn how to build things. You learn how to create things. Use woodworking tools, saws, blades, those things that spin around real fast, tools, hammers, you learn all those things. And why is that important? Because there's a whole generation of people now who are going to be retiring from the airline mechanic force, and there's no one to take their spot. There's such a, such a job demand, such a need now for airline mechanics. And people don't know that. I wish. I guess I could write the school learn how to do it, but by the time I'd be ready, I'd be ready to retire, so that would be kind of pointless. <laughs> but there's that skill that we learned in junior high, in home ec, in shop class, about building things and fixing things. Nowadays, if it's broken, ah, eh, we'll just throw it away. Get a new one, no big deal. Car runs out again, ah, eh, we'll just get a new one, it's okay. <laughs> because it's such a disposable society we're in now. Many things. If you drive down the road and you'll see a subdivision, not a busy, not a business street, but a subdivision, you'll see stuff piled on the sidewalk sometimes for the trash bin to pick up. Vacuum cleaners, chainsaws, lawnmowers, and then often you'll see a guy with a great big pickup truck who stops and he loads out something back to his truck. And you think, what a strange person. Why is he picking up all that crap off the road? Well, that guy picks up all that crap off the road because he has a skill. He can fix those chainsaws. He can pick it up for free, fix it, and sell it for $75, which is a bargain for a chainsaw. But he makes $75 on it because he learned in shop class that there's a skill that you need to keep this, to keep our society going. We don't need to buy everything new. We can rebuild things, fix things. And while you're fixing things, let's fix dinner. How many of us say ate on the way here? All right, someone did. <laughs> How many of us are going to go home tonight and fix a nice big dinner, seven course meal? Seven, seven courses? Seven course. I'm going to your house. <laughs> <laughs> but our world is so much grab it needed. It's easy to drive through a you know, go through the drive through at any restaurant and they'll just take this thing home and eat it on the way to eat at home. People, not even just children, but a lot of people are losing the ability to cook. 
and cooking is essential. I think it's essential because it's not just about food. Combining foods, making food. Who knew? Who was the first one to discover you could take a bunch of flour and a bunch of sugar and some eggs and some vanilla and press those? Who was the first one to do that? I wonder that. But you can do that. Have you ever made a, you ever made a cake from scratch? I made one about a month ago for my son's birthday, August 15th. I made a cake from scratch. And I told somebody at work that I made this cake. And they're like, why don't you save it? Because it's out of a box. It's like, it's just going to go bad before we eat it all. And it's like, no, we're going to eat it all before it goes bad because it was so delicious. It's not like the box preserved food. There's no, no preservatives. Well, there's some. No, there's no preservatives in it from scratch. It's good, it's healthy, it's also fun to make. It teaches you the skill of combining foods. And if we're combining foods, we can combine, you know, put the vegetable together and with the meat. And what's that gonna do to people, the young people? It's gonna teach them to eat better. And if they're eating better, maybe they'll get healthier. If they get healthier, it might be the end to the obesity problem that we see in children in so many schools in so many areas of our country. The whole economics may just be the answer to what is wrong with the kids these days. And I'm looking forward to the time when I have grandkids. I don't have grandkids yet. But when I have grandkids, I'm going to teach them a secret encryption method called cursive writing. <laughs> I look forward to that day also, yeah. Mr. Contest Master.